All right, so welcome to the Volunteer Tutor and Classroom Aid webinar series. Um, today we have Susan Finn Miller joining us, um, and she's going to talk about goal setting to empower adult learners. So take it away, Susan. Oh, great. Thank you, Rachel. I'm pleased to be here with everybody this morning. Um, and uh, maybe Lynn and Rachel, if you guys could help sort of monitor the chat, if there's a question there, I'd be happy to answer questions throughout. And um, if anybody wants to speak up on their mic, that would be okay too. So a warm welcome to all. Here's our agenda. We're, we're hoping to cover a lot this morning in a short amount of time. So we'll talk about what our goals are. We're, um, we'll have a conversation about why is goal setting important and ways to, to identify learners' goals, making connections between the tutoring sessions and goal achievement. And I'm, the plan is to share a whole bunch of a wide range of goal setting tools, some of which might be useful to you. So um, we'll, and I'm guessing that certain tools would be int of interest and useful for some people and others would be of interest and useful to others. So um, we'll also zero in on learning activities and goals. So we're kind of talking about long-term goals and short-term goals, short-term related to learning. So learning objectives and goals. So we'll touch on that a little bit too. And then how can we celebrate uh, learners' achievement of goals? I'm hoping that by the end, you'll set a personal goal uh, for to check out some of the tools, to think about possibly some different ways or some um, interesting ideas for integrating goal setting with students. And we'll wrap things up. So I'm curious about uh, who is here in the audience. I'm not sure of the best way to do this. I'd like to know how the learners and the levels that you're working with. So how can I, <laughs> I should have made a poll, uh, Rachel. How can I find out who, how many of you are working with English learners? Do you, do you want me to, do you want people to put it in the chat or shall I just show everybody's video for a minute so we can? Yeah, maybe show the videos way. and people can raise their hands okay. or use the icon, the hand raising or, icon. If you want, we could even put like a, a use the annotate bar and put like hmm. a, a mm -hmm. star or something next to what oh, we're teaching. Oh, that's a good idea. People know how to use that. Yeah. Are people familiar with how to use the annotate feature on Zoom? Okay. So if you go up to the top of your screen, it'll say you are viewing Susan Familiar's screen. Next to that, it says view options. If you click down that, if you click that, you should have an option to annotate. And you'll get a little toolbar. Um, and you'll be able to, for this, probably just want to choose stamp or maybe draw. Um, so you have checks and hearts and stars and all kinds of things there. Is everybody able to do this or needs help or not? See a few people making it work there. Mm -hmm. Good. And if that's just too complicated or if you're joining on a cell phone, sometimes that annotate doesn't work as well. You can also just yeah. put it in the chat. Yeah. And Susan, and Susan, just to answer the other question, I know at our agency, we're doing both remote and in person. Mm -hmm. And is that with like a high flex model? High flex meaning that students can choose whether to come in person or? I'm learning how to do that. So right okay. now it's, it's Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, to, it's, it's Zoom part of the time and in person part of the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah we're kind of in a transition here aren't we trying to figure <laughs> out how to learn uh, what the what some models might be to best address the needs of the learners that we're serving so 
I'm working entirely remotely, partly because my local library doesn't have the best uh, COVID precautions, and that's where I was okay. meeting. But mostly because one of my students moved, and the other one I started meeting with while we were already switched over to remote, so she never lived anywhere near me, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. It's like a whole different world now, isn't it? Um, with COVID, and I honestly have said many times that the silver lining of COVID is our growing awareness of how important technology is for ourselves as well as for the learners that we're serving. So yeah, so there's a wide range here. Um, looks like mostly English learners, but we also have ABE and HSE, and we have some in-person and some remote, and, and Lynn says she's doing both, and I'm guessing that's kind of the direction we're going to go, that um, programs will be offering both to address the needs that, of the students out there, so thank you very much for that. That helps me. I want to tailor what I share with you to address your specific situations. And I don't know if you were following the chat, Susan, but again, there's a lot of the same thing here. People either yeah. doing ABE and HSC or oh, ESL yeah, sure. and ABE and people saying some remote, some in person and some combinations. So we're all oh, over the map here for you. Great, okay, very good, very good. Yeah, so we're a mixed group here. Pretty typical, you know. All right, thank you for that. That helps me. Um, all right, now we have to get rid of those uh, those marks. And she did it already, wow. So here are our goals. Um, you'll have the opportunity to reflect on your current practice with goal setting. We'll talk about why it's relevant. Explain some goal setting strategies. Um, and then ho hopefully you'll be able to apply some long-term and short-term goal setting strat strategies, maybe uh, something that you haven't tried to um, Im implement previously, and then set a personal goal. So let's take a moment to reflect, why is goal setting with learners important? Uh, how do you work with learners on goal setting? And what, if anything, makes working and goal setting challenging. So there is a handout, there's a note here about jotting notes, but the handout um, we'll share later. So if you have paper there and you wanna jot some notes, feel free to do that. We'll be sharing the handout at the end. I wasn't sure about that. So that's why that's on this slide right now. So we'll just take a moment for personal reflection. And when we're when you're ready, I think everybody feel free to unmute or you can put comments in the chat if you prefer. But I'd love to hear people's voices. I'll help you. I'll start. Yeah, thank you. This is Lynn. Um, why is goal setting? Um, with learners important, it helps that it helps me as the teacher or me as the tutor to make sure that what we're doing is what the learner wants to learn and that we're on the right path, you know, so that we have, we know where we're going and we're teaching or instructing, providing instruction in what is relevant to the learner. But it also helps us to um, make sure that we're moving forward and that we're not stagnant. And then um, the how is just right now a conversation and probably some writing, you know, mm -hmm. like jotting down ideas and then um, challenging, I think for me personally, is they wanna jump to the end goal without understanding there's a bunch of steps in between. Yeah, you I know, think that we're right. working towards it, but it's, mm -hmm. we're not quite there. Yeah. So I wanna, uh, my goal is I wanna learn English in two months, right? That might not be that easy, right? Or I wanna get my, my GED in a couple of weeks. 
Um, it might take longer than that. It, it's not always realistic. I know one else? of my biggest challenges yeah. is the fact I work with adult ESL students at a high beginning. They're supposed to be high beginning. A lot of them understand very little English though. So, you know, trying to get them to a level where they can explain to you what they even want to learn about is my current challenge is trying to get them where they can even give you basic sentences and yep you know I totally so, get and I, that I totally and I'm get just that. starting yep. with them so it's yeah at this point it's like let's teach them some English then we'll worry about everything else <laughs> yes I can totally relate to that um some of you know me, I didn't really introduce myself, but I work with English learners for 30 years and I understand what you're saying completely. Yep. Yep. Others talk about your challenges or explain how you're working with learners on goal setting. So one thing that I'll sometimes say to my students is I work for you. Um, I am doing a job for you, so I need to know what you want from me. Um, and I find that sometimes helps with uh, my biggest problem with goal setting, which is students just not wanting to tell me. They, they want to do whatever I want to do, um, and they don't really want to, to speak up. They just want to go through whatever whatever you want, whatever you want. Is, is something that I hear a lot. Um, so what with, learners are, are you working with or what oh, learners? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm, okay. working no. with, um, I'm working with ESL learners primarily. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Um, yeah, and, I think that's a very common experience. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, also, I, I am fully aware of the benefits of uh, immersion learning. I, I understand that it's generally a good idea to speak to your students in English all the time. But when you are running into a problem where you just straight up cannot communicate with your student about things that you need to know, um, honestly, try communicating with them in their language if you can. Like, if, if you need that information, you know, you use a translation app, or if you know some of their language, then that's helpful. Um, would be my suggestion. Um, like not that, that's a good suggestion. Yes. Thank you, Thank you Sorry, for that. Forever there. Anyone else like to share? Uh, Christine put something in the chat. She said um, she asks her student what he wants to learn and what reading subjects he wants to he does he enjoy reading about. Okay, that's great, Christine. Thank you for that. Yeah. Excellent. All right. And I know I've already talked too much, but one thing that can help is asking about their interests. Like what mm -hmm. do they like? Absolutely, absolutely. That's very much in line with Christine's goal there too. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just talk for a few minutes on ways to increase motivation through goal setting. I think that we um, kind of already agreed that goal setting and motivation are related. And so how can we increase that motivation? So th these ideas come from Rachel Davis. She's got a website and I just um, borrowed her ideas to share with you. She's actually a K-12, but all of this I think is relevant to us as well. So the first step is to identify a, a goal the goal should be challenging yet obtainable. Um, we want students to feel a sense of accomplishment. Um, and once they achieve their goal to set maybe a bigger goal. So identify something that's fairly small and achievable. Um, so I, one of my first uh, positions in adult education was with adjudicated youth who were uh, working towards a high school equivalency diploma. And, you know, some of those young men, they were all boys. 
Some of them wanted to be NBA players. That was their goal. Uh, others wanted to be rappers. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm not sure how obtainable these goals are. So um, it, part of it is helping uh, a student recognize and support them to understand what's achievable and make those first steps uh, something that they can, they can actually reach. So having the students visualize the results, what will this look like when they achieve their goal? How would they feel when they achieve their goal? Um, I was at a conference this past weekend and one of the speakers talked about visualizing the results. And she said that visualizing the results at the beginning of the goal setting process is really important, but it's also important later on to I think about, well, how will you feel if you do not achieve your goal? So that sounds negative, but actually there's research that shows that um, that's also can be very motivating. So I thought I'd share that with you too, since, um, since I just heard about that recently. So number three says to plan backwards, um, guessing that some of you are familiar with the smart goal setting plan that uh, I'll be sharing a template for that in case you're interested and would like to try using uh, a SMART goal setting plan. So we set a date, we uh, think through the small steps to achievement and try to document and anticipate some milestones. This is a way to, um, to set a goal and try to monitor those steps along the way. So identifying motivation. So with some students, we might even need to define and help them understand. Very low level English learners are not gonna be ready for this, but uh, many students will help them to understand the difference, for example, between internal goals and external goals. You probably have thought about and heard about intrinsic, meaning those internal goals. So something inside of us, we want to achieve um, versus the external or extrinsic rewards. I, you know, maybe I, I want to be a medical doctor because I want to make a lot of money. <laughs> that would be external. So discussing barriers, and this is something I know that many programs have on staff, student advisors or coaches that uh, do orientation with the students. And part of that process is uh, identifying certain barriers. Um, also discussions about ways to overcome those barriers. So that's related to number six, finding a support system. So this can be people at home, people in the, in the program, of course. It can be um, the teachers and the volunteers, the tutors that work with the students. We are part of their support system. They might have others in the community that can also, or, or community services that can support students. I'm grateful that we've been able to provide student advisors uh, in our programs more so than in the past. So that's something that um, is a positive change for the field. And then the last one, planning for the future, revisiting those goals on a regular basis and adapting them as needed. So um, what's next? So thinking about once a goal is achieved, thinking about what might be the next goal that the student hopes to achieve. So I welcome any comments or questions here. That's just a quick overview. Um, so if anybody has any comments, feel free. So um, we're going to engage together in a Jamboard related to this question, what goals are important to the learners that you work with? And I don't know if everybody's used a Jamboard before or not. I don't think we've done them as part of this webinar series. Um, but to open it up, you would just click the link that Susan shared in the chat. Hmm. So can everyone see my screen for Jamboard? Um, we're still seeing the slide. OK. How about now? Yes. OK. All right. So to, I'll explain the steps for um, if you have not used Jamboard before, it's pretty fun. 
So this is the Jamboard um, screen. And over here, can everyone see the sticky note over here? You click there and the sticky note will pop up. And you can just type on the sticky note, click save, and your sticky note shows up on the screen. And you can drag it all around if you like. You can choose the color, the, it's a variety of colors available. You can also use the text box, which somebody just did. <clears throat> Oops, disappeared. Oh, is anybody is if you are having trouble accessing the Jamboard, um, let me know. Just click on the link that Susan shared in the chat. You can't get this to write. Are, um, Christine, are you using the sticky note or the or the text box? Citizenship. Get a better job, understand English. Good. So you can see um, somebody said get citizenship and they made theirs blue. So there are different colors available on the sticky notes too, which is kind of fun. So, over here, if you're still not sure what to do, this one right here under the arrow is the sticky note. I can choose any of these colors, for example. Do daily activities. Out of the house, shopping, communication with teachers, school doctors, yeah, children's teachers, for sure, as well as their own teachers, yeah. Get a job, get, yeah, in a job interview is perfect. Good job, everybody. I bet some of you are doing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. I use this all the time in my own classes. Improve English skills. Great. All right. Does anybody need more time for this or can we move on? There are a couple of comments in the chat. I'm just going to copy onto sticky notes here. Oh, okay, great. Read to children. Yeah. Improve his reading and writing ability. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for adding those to the chat. And thanks for adding them to our, to our Jamboard. Read to kids. Improve reading and writing. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, all of these are very common goals, help children with schoolwork, speak with customers at work, also in, you know, speak with the boss, speak with um, co-workers. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's great. Okay, hopefully I'm getting back to the slides. <laughs> And all right, thank you so much for that. So I wanted to share a story about a student that I worked with recently. Um, this <coughs> woman was from Iraq and she was in her early thirties. She'd been in the US for six years. She was married with two kids. She was a homemaker, no work experience at all. And um, in my program, we were using the, at that point, we were using best literacy. So she was at the low beginning level, and this was a beginning level class. Um, so these were her goals, and, and you, uh, these were mentioned in your uh, Jamboard, the, your contributions to the Jamboard about your students' goals. So talking to chil children's teachers, reading and writing more. Also, she had a goal to start driving to class. Uh, and she wanted to learn more about computers. I'm guessing that some of you have students that want to improve their tech skills as well. And her career goal was she wanted to get a job. She'd never had a job before. So at, by but through the class, and I can't take 100% credit for this, but she did start driving to class. She not only drove herself to class, but she was picking up other students to bring them to class as well. 
And we, she also got a job. So it was great. And um, this was one of the best stories that my I ever um, experienced in my career because her nine-year-old daughter wrote me this beautiful note thanking me for how much her mother's life had changed. And that just, that was, like I said, just uh, absolutely heartwarming and made a, just made me feel so great. So I know you have similar successes in, in your practice. So introducing goal setting. What is a goal? So I already heard from at least one person um, saying that goal setting can be really challenging and the limitations with language can be a, a serious uh, barrier to having this conversation. So just what is a goal? Understanding the word goal. Um, this can be very vary a lot from culture to culture. We in the United States are a very goal-oriented people, um, but this is not necessarily the case around the world. So when students come to us, we have some challenges, not only with the language itself and understanding the word goal, but just the concept of goal setting. So I think that we do really face some, some major challenges here. So one of the things that I um, have been able to do, and I'm not 100% sure what I do here. Uh, I need to get back to the internet. So how do I do that? Okay, I can go. Jamboard, I think, and then I can go to. Can everyone see this document yeah. now? Yes, we can see. Okay, it. thanks for your patience. Well, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, how do I do this? <laughs> so, um, I designed this particular tool when working with low level English learners, and it seems like this might be relevant to some of you. Um, so, what is the goal. So of course, when we work with low level students, it's very important to use pictures. So um, I wanted to be sure that the students understood the word goal itself. Low level students are not going to understand that word. And as I was indicating, just the whole concept of goal setting could be something they're not familiar with. So the first question there, um, the directions that say, look at the pictures, read the questions, write the answers on the lines. So we're looking at the picture of the soccer players. What do they want to do? They want to, and to keep this very simple, because um, there are a lot of ways to finish this, the, this, uh, this sentence, to, but to keep it very simple, they want to win. So on the, on the right-hand side is the question, what is their goal? So we're making the connection with what people want to do and the word goal. What is their goal? Their goal is to win. So I'm trying to make sure that the students begin to internalize how we're using this word goal. So the second set of pictures here, um, what do they want to do? They want to, does somebody want to call it out? Buy a house. <laughs> okay, yeah, buy a house, right? They want to buy a house. What is their goal? Their goal is to buy a house. So we keep the structure the same and repeat the, you know, keep the, the sentence structure exactly the same here so that low level students begin to understand how we're using the word goal. So the last picture is an English class. So what do they want to do? They want to learn English. Learn English, right? It's pretty obvious. And what is their goal? Their goal is to learn English. So the purpose of this document, just to repeat what um, I've been saying, is for students to um, understand what the word goal is and how it's related to what people want to do. So 
that was, uh, I think, an important tool, and you'll have access to this tool. You can change it. You can, um, you know, edit it to uh, suit your purposes if you think it might help you working with goal setting uh, with low-level students. So the next document that you'll have access to is this one here. So after making sure that students understand the word goal, um, I created this document to work with fairly, fairly low level students, but I think this document could be helpful with a wide range of learners. So my goals, I need more English because, <laughs> that word because, really important, because I want to, and here are some work goals, and this is, um, we saw this in our, in our Jamboard today. Um, so I know that some of your students want to get a job. Some of them want to get a better job, which means more money and benefits. Um, filling out a job application showed up in our Jamboard. Interviewing showed up in our Jamboard. These are education goals, get a high school diploma. Some of you are working with um, higher level students or ABE students. And some of them might, you know, want to go to college or get training for a better job, learn more about computers. That story that I told about my student, she wanted to learn more about computers. That was an important goal. And then we have personal and family goals. A lot of this showed up in our Jamboard too, talking to people, talking to coworkers, talking to customers at work, friends, neighbors talking to the doctor that showed up in r and r Jamboard, talk to the child's teacher, talk to people at school for the children, talk to their own teachers too. Talking on the phone. For English learners, this is huge. It's very difficult understanding on the phone. So they might not have thought about this as being one of their goals, but if you add it to a document like this, they might check that box. Like, yes, I definitely want to do that. Citizenship came up, getting a driver's license. Uh, my student wanted to drive to class that was related to driving. Read more in English, write more in English. So we have the opportunity through using a tool like this to help the students identify some of the things that are really important to them. So we also want to be able to um, tie the goals that students uh, are interested in to the tutoring session or the GED class or whatever it is, that, the reading and writing class that they are um, engaged in and enrolled in. So come to class every day, let the teacher or tutor know when I can't come to class, study at home. So I think, um, studying at home was always a really important aspect of my own class. I always wanted to support the students to be able to continue their studying at home. And I created this, this document here to um, try to support them to do that. So this is uh, sort of another version of the one with the pictures. Um, so you can see some of the same goals, almost all the same goals are here. Um, and it was my attempt to create a structure to help them to actually uh, increase their studying, not just in when they come to class or when we meet, but uh, to try to take some time at least to do some studying at home too. So if you think this might be useful, these websites are really for learning English. Um, so my students, I also gave them this, study English at home. I'm a huge uh, proponent of using flashcards for studying vocabulary. This is also important for ABE level students. Um, Quizlet is an online vocabulary. You might be familiar with that. All of these links, this for Quizlet, for example, um, you know, all levels of learners can use Quizlet uh, to learn more, to study vocabulary. So you can see some of the, the similar goals here, reading stories from the teacher. I would provide them with materials to read and I would also give them these websites um, to make, to set a goal to study at home. 
So this document can be adapted for any type of class uh, if you think it might be might be helpful. All right. So let's see. I think I want to go back to the slides now. All right. So on this um, on the slides here are the same goals that we've been talking about: personal goals, education goals. Uh, work and career goals. I don't know if anyone, one of the things that also appears here is on the on the work career side towards the end of here, the list, reclaiming a career. Um, I know I've worked with many English learners who are professionals in their countries. They're teachers, they're engineers, they're nurses. They're, I've worked with many uh, physicians too. So for professionals, that's almost always what they hope to be able to do is reclaim their career here in the U.S., which is, you know, a very challenging, um, very challenging to do. But uh, hopefully with our support, they can get close to that goal. So I think connecting the goal to our to class or tutoring session, asking learners to make a commitment to attend regularly, that's an expectation really, but studying at home is going to help them to achieve their goal more quickly, providing resources similar to the ones that I shared with you uh, is also going to be helpful. So there's a whole bunch of goal setting tools and resources. And um, as I indicated on the handout, you'll have links to all of these resources. So I'm just gonna highlight some of them. Um, you can choose the ones that you'd like to check out then when you get the handout. So this is the SMART goal setting template, which we referred to earlier, setting a goal and um, uh, trying to articulate the steps and make it so that it's both achievable, realistic, timely, and so on. Citizenship came up. Um, these goal setting tools are included in the adult citizen, uh, uh, the US Citizenship and Immigration Services Adult Citizenship Education Program Development Guide, which is a new resource that's available online. Um, these are in the appendices for that document, these three tools. So I think this is related not just to citizenship, it could be uh, used or adapted for just about any class or any tutoring relationship. So there's a needs assessment on the left side and then an individualized plan and a sample student contract. So you might get ideas from these tools or in some cases, maybe you would just go ahead and use the tool the way it is. This document comes from Lake County, Florida Literacy Program. Um, you'll have a link to the document. This I've only featured a couple of pages. I think it's about a six page document, which um, identifies goals in different categories. So you can see on the left-hand side, um, students might have shopping goals. They might have money goals. They might have goals related to housing, transportation, or health. So to get ideas for what might be useful, I think this was a interesting document. Um, there's also a tool on the right-hand side that you can see. Um, so a long-term goal is be able to use a checking account to pay bills. A short-term goal, be able to read bills, locate the amount owed and determine whom the check should be made to. So I think this kind of tool could be very useful for um, zeroing in on something that's important to students. And this tool you can um, access through the handout and see, look at it, you know, look at the rest of it. This is just uh, featuring a couple of pages to see whether the, um, the strategies or maybe this this you can use this as a template for um, figuring out activities and methods that could be used to help the students um, achieve their goal. So there's second goal there was to be able to recognize and write number words to 100. So 
very specific goals around instruction. I really like this particular approach and hoping that might be useful to some of you. So um, this is a, a, a picture of the Reading for Understanding textbook, which I consider to be one of the very best textbooks available for working with, um, you know, the title is how, the subtitle, How Reading Apprenticeship Improves Disciplinary Learning in a Secondary and College Classroom. But in this book, it has many, many examples of uh, adult education classes too. It's not just um, high school and college classrooms. There, there's just a ton of great resources in here. Um, it's definitely a book that would be a highly recommended book on my list. So there's an interest in reading survey that's included in this book, and um, it's actually available online. It's uh, on the list on the handout, so you can access the, the interest in reading survey. Um, it helps us to get to know one another, get to know the learner that you're working with, and get to know each other as readers. So this is very specific to reading, and it's a, a very, very long survey. So I wouldn't necessarily use the whole survey, but some of the questions, maybe, you know, maybe you pick out just a few questions that could help you better understand your learner as a reader. So passing that along in case it might be useful. This is a resource that's been around for a pretty, pretty long time, integrating career awareness into the ABE and ESOL classroom. So this, this is a, a available freely online, the entire toolkit. It um, includes many uh, instructional resources and the lessons are, are really, really excellent. Um, appropriate for, I would say, intermediate uh, English learners and ABE students as well. So what I think was especially helpful related to goal setting is the self-exploration process starting on page 28 of this resource. Um, very similarly, uh, the City University of New York's Career Fundamentals Toolkit, um, I would say targets a higher level of student than the one we on the previous slide. So unit two, knowing myself, the, um, the previous tool that we looked at is very similar in terms of um, the knowing myself section here focused on values, strengths, and skills. So helping the students to identify uh, these areas can be extremely helpful as they think about setting their own goals to identify their personal characteristics, their strengths, and also their skills. So I think that either one of these tools, um, depending on the level you're working with, and as it relates to career, and planning for the future, those long-term goals, um, helping the students identify their values, strengths, and skills. Both of these uh, resources would focus very well um, on those areas. Also helps, you know, it says knowing myself, but it also helps uh, us get to know the students better, which I think enables us to be more effective in our work. So this is um, a tool the ONET Interest Profiler is one of the absolutely best tools that's available online. Um, I like to call it uh, a way to better understand our work personality. This is a, the, the US government provides this website for free. And um, the Interest Profiler is just one aspect of this website. So uh, I've used this with students, um, more advanced English learners, but this could be done, you know, with ABE and HSC learners as well. Um, identifying their work personality in which the website will then match with particular careers that would be well aligned with somebody who had these personal work personality characteristics. So, um, if you decided to use this, I would recommend doing it yourself first so you get familiar with the tool. 
and what, see whether or not you uh, agree with what the interest profiler says about you in terms of your work personality. I did that and I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was right on target as far as uh, my own work personality. What's great about this website is not only it's so interesting to find out, you know, um, you know, what, how, what careers might be of interest based on the results of the survey, but um, the website will then connect students to a lot of information about various careers that show up and that they can watch videos. There are videos with people that do particular jobs so they can learn more about you know, what is the, what is it like to be an airline pilot or whatever it shows, whatever kind of career they might be interested in, in looking into. It not only does that, it shows them how much money they can make, what kind of training they would need, whether this job is a high priority occupation in, in their area. And, you know, maybe it's not a high priority com, uh, career in their area, but maybe it is in a different area. So they would have information about maybe, well, maybe they want to move to get the training they need for this job, or there's going to be more um, possibility of getting a job that is related to, you know, something they're interested in, in in a different part of the state or so on. So um, I wanted to actually share uh, one of the things that um that I did and I uh, um, don't want to don't want us to run out of time here but um let's see okay I'm, I'm always have trouble with this <laughs> I and, guess it's and here. Susan, there while you're finding that, I just wanted to say there's a few things that have showed up in the chat. Um, so Christine likes the website resources and the Lake County goal. Yeah, yeah. Christine likes all your resources. And, yeah, um, so, and yeah, just, I know I keep saying it over and over, but you'll have access to all of this and yeah. you'll be able to make it your own, which is um, another um, you know, I want you to be able to edit the documents to make it your own, make it work for you and the students. So these are what I did for my students. Can everyone see this? What is your work personality? Can you see? Yes, this? we can. Yeah. Oh, we good. Can see okay. That. So I typed up all the, there are 60 questions. That's a lot. And, you know, it might be too much for the students that you're working with, depending on that. It was too much. So we, I broke it down into uh, around 20 questions each. And um, so we did, um, you know, walked through this. We did it in class and um, the students answered all of the questions but we did it over like three days. So it wasn't so overwhelming and they had support. So, you know, there, it could be that they don't understand some of these questions. So um, building kitchen cabinets, how much would you like to do that? Strongly dislike, dislike, you can see across the choices there. So when they filled out this document, um, then when we went to the website, they had all their answers right there. They understood it and they were able to easily and fairly quickly enter the information to the website. So I'll be sharing this with you in case it might be of interest. So let's see if I can go back to the slides. I'm getting a little better with this. <laughs> Okay, so the ONET Interest Profiler, the My Next Move website, absolutely fantastic resource. Um, I was one of, always one of my very favorite things to do with more advanced students. So the last set of materials here is about um, digital literacy, and this one is specific for it was designed English now. So you know how. Um, do students have a smartphone, a tablet, a computer? Almost everybody does have a smartphone these days and so on. Um, so getting information about how students are using their technology, this can be super helpful if we're uh, supporting them with enhancing and building their tech skills. 
This might be a website that folks are familiar with. It's the North Star Digital Literacy Assessment. This is a website that um, students can do assessments on the website and uh, it's free, it's fantastic. So you can see basic computer skills, internet basics, using email, uh, using Microsoft Word, using social media, et cetera. So they can get their results through um, the North Star Digital Literacy As uh, Assessment website, and that can support the teacher to understand, you know, what is it that the students might need help with. So I'm gonna, um, we're really short on time here, um, but I'm gonna go through this very quickly. We, we, we do want to talk with learners about, so we're kind of shifting to um, learning goals and objectives for our sessions, for the lessons. So talking with learners about their learning and about their specific goals for a lesson can be very important. Um, welcoming their ideas, and I know we talked about that can be challenging, um, but hopefully some of the tools that we've already shared might help with that. Um, some students are ready for this conversation, some may not be quite ready, but we can structure activities to gather information to help us to guide instruction. So if you work with a small group, you might consider, um, this is something I did with every class, created a group poster, put this on the wall. Um, it can be simpler than that. And if you just work with an individual, you know, you can just, this can just be a conversation rather than a poster, but asking the students where they work, do they need a job, um, don't need a job, need a better job. So on the poster, they would fill out a sticky note and put their name in one of the columns. So right away, this is helping the teacher understand a lot about where uh, the needs are. Um, this is one of my very favorite activities to do with, especially with beginners, but um, it could be done with others as well. But uh, we use the Oxford Picture Dictionary, and I prefer using the one that's with translation. So the, uh, we go to the occupation section, and the students get a handout similar to what you see on the slide. And um, they write down the jobs that they like, the ones they don't like, yeah, it's okay. So this is fantastic because it gives the teacher, the tutor, just a ton of information about what students are interested in and um, sometimes very surprising results. You know, you'll get a student tell you that they want to be uh, a singer or an actor. Or they really like that job and it's just interesting and it gives you uh, interesting uh, conversation topics related to what they might like to do. So there's also a document, and I'm not going to go to the document, but it's related to job skills. So things that students can do, things that they can't do, and things they want to learn to do. So with um, English learners, uh, the Oxford Picture Dictionary does have a job skills page. So we go to that page for this um, particular activity. And um, you know, the students can write in, yes, I can drive a car, I can't drive a truck, I want to learn to drive a truck, for example. Also talking with them about their past work experience or having them write about their past work experience is a really great way to get to know students as well as to better understand what some of their skills are. So, um, a lot of teachers use a KWL, which you see on the on the left hand side, which is a really great tool uh, for goal setting related to uh, a topic that's recovering in class. So, what do I know? What I want? What do I want to know? And what did I learn? So, that's a great tool. Um, on the other side of the slide is a similar tool. But one of the things that some teachers have complained about is that students will write things on what I know, the what I know column on the KWL, but maybe what they thought they knew wasn't really right. <laughs> so this is a tool that could be used to help students confirm whether what they thought they knew was correct, or maybe it was a misconception. So here's a, a tool that can really help zero in on what um, the students think they really know. 
And then I like the last column, the wondering column too. So just a, a possible tool that you might consider. Uh, another tool that is very powerful is a knowledge rating scale. I don't know if this is familiar to anybody, but um, we know how important it is to teach vocabulary explicitly. And we know that we should be focusing on um, academic words, even with the lowest level students, I think we wanna begin introducing those words. So for, um, you know, intermediate level and higher level and ABE and HSC, vocabulary is absolutely so critical. Um, giving the students a knowledge rating scale that features the words that are in the text that you're using, um, listing them on a document like this, and then having the students decide how well do they know this particular word. Um, we don't just know words, we know them to varying degrees. That's true for us as much as it is for students. So I know this word, I've heard it, but I'm not quite sure what it means. I know it has something to do with, I know this word, I know it so well, I can explain it to others. So gathering this kind of information from the learner gives us a lot of very helpful information to prioritize the words that we focus on for instruction. Um, our instructional time is so limited. And so being able to prioritize is critical. And um, this is a tool that can help us to do that. So in choosing words for the knowledge rating scale, one of the tools that I use is something called the vocabulary profiler. You can see that term at the very bottom on the left-hand side. Um, the vocabulary profiler really has uh, assisted me in choosing the vocabulary words that I teach and that I could if I decided to use the knowledge rating scale that we just looked at. So I copy and paste um, text into a text box on text box on the vocabulary profiler website. This is the transcript, a video transcript, which I love using video. Um, so, and I use a, the transcript from the videos in a whole host of different ways. So what you get when you copy and paste text into a, this text box is uh, on the right-hand side. The blue words on the right hand side are the 1000 most among the 1000 most common words in English from this transcript. The green are the second 1000 most common words and the yellow words are the ones on the academic word list. So the academic word list is um, words that uh, are general academic words that from research are the most common words across academic disciplines. So I'm going to uh, work when working with, you know, advanced students uh, on a, with using a video or high intermediate students, I'm going to focus on those words in yellow, invested, published, editorial, major, commitment. Those are going to be the words that I would add to my knowledge rating scale to find out which words the students uh, don't know, and I would focus uh, classroom instruction then or a tutoring session on those words. All right, so we're, we've reached the end, and I've been talking a lot, <laughs> and we're really out of time. We only have a minute, but if you have any suggestions or ideas for ways to celebrate learners' achievements, um, I'm sure you're already doing mm -hmm. that. Be, feel free to, I know some, in some yeah. cases, people give certificates, which is great. So I'm hoping that you would uh, be able, that you have something in mind, a goal that you'd like to try. I would recommend starting simple, um, you know, make sure learners understand what a goal is. Uh, if you're working with the very lowest level learner, use or create, um, draw from the materials I'm sharing with you to create a goal setting worksheet. Help them to see that your sessions support them to achieve their goals by regularly revisiting and asking learners to monitor their goals, attend regularly, study at home, provide resources for students to study at home. And um, yeah, so I hope you feel that you were able to reflect on your current practice. Um, we did have some discussion around goal setting that hopefully is relevant and that um, we've been able to uh, help you to feel prepared or at least, you know, a little bit um, to 
explain goal setting strategies with beginners if you're working with beginners and apply some um, goal setting strategies, setting a goal to do so in your practice. So we are out of time. I am a Lynx moderator and I wanna encourage everybody to join Lynx if you are not already on there. Um, love to hear your voice on Lynx. Thank you for being here today. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, yes. Yeah. So thanks to uh, Rachel and 